Hey people, what's going on? Um, 17th, Tuesday, January. Just getting my motor rolling. Um, you know, if you follow me on Facebook, uh, you, you, you see that I've been um, posting a lot of music of Takahashi and YMO. But I've also been um, keeping up my post, and I'm just um, checking here to see if there's something. Uh, you know, I've been posting stuff about uh, mental health because people really have been struggling. And uh, this morning, I just got done with a conversation with a friend who um, had a real rough night. Um, And I uh, needed to let him know that it's, well, you know, if these comments triggered something, then there's work that needs to be done, but <laughs> not by me, <laughs> you know, pointing out that we need to take care of our mental health and that we need, you know, to do these things ourselves. It's not something that's easy to hear for a lot of people, you know. Here's what I said. I said a couple things. I said, do the inner work. You're worth it. Then I wrote, understand that others can't do what we need done. It's up to us. Their support is crucial, though. And that's one of the things that I find people really struggling with, is that they want answers, they want it over, they want it fixed, and clinging desperately to the idea that someone can fix them. There's this, um, this, this, this um, professionally... Um, pushed illusion that therapy is the answer, that a therapist can solve your problems. That's not true. It's not true at all. Matter of fact, um, if, if you look probably at some older dictionaries, because I imagine it's been um, modified, but if you look up the original um, definition of therapy, we can therapize ourselves. Therapy is, it is, is an interaction or an exchange that is helpful. In essence, okay, the idea is not the therapist has the answer to your problems. That's what people assume. It's, 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 a, it's a bad assumption. Now, am I trashing all therapists? N no. If you have a good therapist that's helpful, well, recognize probably one of the reasons why is because they're helping you to help yourself. Helping you to see what you need to see. So, anyway, hope everyone's okay. And I had a conversation with a couple people. Oh, that's what I want to say. But folks, um... Please, I don't mean to be rude, but I am getting a lot of messenger messages and requests, and I don't want to chit-chat, okay? Please don't take it personal. Um, I have a lot of people in my life, and this is the um, primary way that I want to to kind of share with you. on, on When I'm on Facebook, what I'm doing quite simply is nerdily posting pictures of what I'm playing or what what I have been playing. P posting pictures of records and looking at other people's records. That's the, the primary thing I do on Facebook besides stay in touch with my family and, and try to share um, affirmations and positive encouragement. That's what I use it for. Really, that's what I use all of my social media for. So speaking of, I played this last night. Get that Obi so you can see it right. The Obi's supposed to be over there. Harumi Hosono and the Yellow Magic Band, Paraiso. This is the album he made in 1978 that led to the formation of Yellow Magic Orchestra. He was using Takahashi and Sakamoto as session musicians, among others, on that album. And it doesn't sound like YMO, it's still him in his um, I Love America, Hawaii type of phase. Uh, which actually I'm glad he moved out of because I didn't like that. I've collected Hosono all the way back into that stuff. 
and a habit, but that's not what I like about Holsono. I like his electronic music. But I understand from his point of view where he got to a point where he got tired of electronic music and went back to his roots. Makes sense. Makes complete sense. But I love the hell out of his electronic work. I couldn't find this for a while and I found it in a pile of records. Sketch show, Loophole. This is a project that he did with Takahashi. Um, really, really good and glitchy. So, let me get this out there. British Progressive Jazz sends me promos um, to review because of the mail system it, appear it appears that I'm getting them too late. I was posting online about this latest one that I got by um, Elton Dean, Steve Miller, and Pip Pyle, Homebrewed. And I just just scratched the surface on this one, but I was showing it, and then people were um, remarking that they had thought it was sold out already. Well, way to go, Matt Parker! If you see this, that you're you, you know you're doing great work with this music. It makes sense that these items are selling quickly because, for those of us that these musicians are important to us, we want to hear it all. You know the Canterbury. Soft Machine contingent that El that Elton Dean was part of, Pit Pile part of Gong, Steve Miller and Caravan. These musicians are really important to us. So um, I'm sorry if I'm kind of late uh, with these reviews because I can't do it until they get here. Excuse me. But congratulations, British Progressive Jazz, for being so successful. I played this again um, last night on Italian Roads. Haven't read the booklet yet, but this is real satisfying. And the thing to say about Elton Dean is that he is, was a true voice on the saxophone, not a pretender. He really has a, a language. He, he speaks and his, and it's a very recognizable um, style that he plays and he's <laughs> the band that he's with my goodness talk about Elton G Elton Dean then Keith Tippett on piano and he lets loose on here he, he, he's, he was a major pianist not just jazz but yeah you've heard this work with King Crimson too and others and then we can't fade Henry Miller Harry Miller on double bass and Louis Maholo on drums. What a group. This is really, really great stuff. And to me, I, I think these are archive recordings that someone was capturing them. So they're not the greatest sound quality, but that's beside the point when you're there for the music. This is some good stuff. Way to go, pretty British progressive jazz. Bravo on you. Bravo on you. So I'm actually kind of feeling uh, revitalized by the exchange I had with a couple friends this morning regarding my uh, mental health posts yesterday because it led to some, some stuff. And um, I had to clarify that, you know, my messages are for everyone. And so if it triggered some mental health issues, deal with them. Because I didn't know. <laughs> But apparently that's how bad people are doing. My posts were actually prompted by the, seeing the post of another friend of mine, a woman who is uh, very obviously not doing well. And she's an amazing woman. And she's an important, strong, intelligent person in Omaha musician I've got one of her old CDs I was trying to get her to get back into music but but things aren't going well for her and a lot of it is in here so I was reaching out to her among others so keep your shit together people do what you need to do to take care of yourself you know and don't lock yourself away don't isolate I'm not isolated myself at all 
I have plenty of contact with people. Yes, I listened to some more Takahashi the Beatniks. Someone posted me a link to an, a, a more recent Beatniks, which I hadn't heard. Um, the main reason why I'm not up to completely up to date on YMO family releases is because it got to the point where Japanese um, imports were, were impossibly um, expensive because of um, postage and I just had to stop. But for years I was trying. So, uh, Takahashi alone has about 40 solo albums, over 40. I'd have to count, but I have probably at least 30 of them. And I call him a master of pop. He is a master of pop. This is the Beatniks with, with, with Keiichi Suzuki. I get the sense from them that they have been longtime friends, maybe even lifelong friends, but they make great music together. They've made several albums. I've only got, I've only got two of them. Other music that got played was this Bill Nelson. Chimera. Bill Nelson from Bebop Deluxe did a lot of work with YMO, toured with them and with y Yukihiro. And so Yukihiro is on about half of these tracks. It's a mini album. Mick Karn from Japan Pan plays based on one track. Really noticeable. This sounds almost like a Takahashi record with Bill Nelson singing. I love this. Because of the technology that they were using and getting used to, there is a certain amount of um, datedness that I hear on that. And on some, some records by the YMO family, mostly the music transcends it. Here's something I just pulled randomly and ended up playing the whole album because I really like it. Maps. I think it's really one guy. I really like this. I've mentioned it before when I got it a couple years ago. Colors reflect time loss. He uses strings on here as well as electronics. I like his melodies. I'm paying much attention to the words. I like his melodies. Here's an album where it seems like there's some controversy with some people about the artist. I don't know what it's about. Don't don't necessarily care because I don't hear anything in the words here to concern me. Mike Stevens, Outlander. Um, this is a reissue of, this came out in 70, 1970. Welsh singer, apparently he sings mainly in Welsh. And this is one of his rare English albums. I think it's pretty cool. It's got that kind of raga folk um, feel to it. And he's impassioned. Whatever he's going on about in his mind, he's into it. And so it, I get caught up in it. I feel it. And the music drives it. It's not just his voice, but the playing. This is a pretty cool album, Outlander. I can see why it's a collector's item. Here's something I wasn't sure how I ended up with it, if someone sent it to me, but last night was the first time I really heard it. And it's like, this is undiscovered. This is undiscovered. People talk about free jazz and spiritual free-blowing and knowing about all the greats and people go on about certain records. I ain't heard anybody, anyone say anything about Jimmy Stewart or this album, Jimmy Stewart and Kuntu. It's on Cadence Jazz. There aren't any big names on here. Charles Bradley on trumpet, you might know him. Okay. This is free and this is, this is blowing. Okay. It's like I started listening to it and I said, oh, this is not what I thought it would be. It's This is hot. This is real. And if you like that spiritual jazz stuff, this is not second rate. This is not him pretending. This is it. Um, waiting, I think it's waiting to be discovered by the jazz bows. That's why I say some things the way I say them is because some people when it comes to collecting are just following the crowd you know you know there's a, I think there's I'm pretty sure but there's a lot of people who are buying jazz that are not listening to it they're buying it almost as a thing to do and to be seen doing I said it because if you really just my opinion if you're a jazzer and you really listen to jazz and you say you like free jazz like 
like Ornette Coleman or Albert Eiler or Frank Lowe, give this a listen. Tell me what you tell me what you hear. Tell me what you feel. This feels very, very real, very powerful. Ooh, dang. So thank you folks for your um, kind thoughts to my sister. I'm just hoping for some prosperity for her. We all need to make a living and at 70 years old, which she is, and I'm 67, going, I'll be 68 this year in July. It's a shame that, you know, the greed heads, you know, have tilted the economy to the point that we on the bottom here were slaving until the very last breaths of our lives can't even retire you know she needs a, a job I didn't even have to say that you know I just she needs a way you know an artistic way would be nice for her if that's what would develop because she's an artist too she has art in her my whole family does thank you for caring about her thank you and thank you all for being decent, okay, because I look, especially on Twitter, and I'm staying on Twitter because it's, um, there's a lot of contact with musicians on there that I'm enjoying, Vernon Reed and Alex Skolnick in particular, um, um, Delicate Steve, those are some people whose tweets, our tweets are getting intertwined, but the uh, political madness on there is off the chain, People have truly left the building when it comes to common sense and em human emotions. People have just lost their heads. And there's no winning. This this divisive, divisive sides. Whose side are you on? Well, you dumb fucks, we're all losing thanks to you, idiots. So... I will continue with my primary focus, which is living, enjoying these breaths, enjoying art and music, enjoying the family and friends in my life, particularly friends since um, my prime siblings are, are, are not here. But that's what's important to me. And I hope that you all are doing okay. And yes, please talk to me. Let me know what's going on.